Hey everybody, welcome back to Nexus Core. I'm Richard, and today we're gonna to be going over my history, post-history collection, Gurgit deck profile. I know a lot of people have been waiting on this, so I'm really excited to show you uh, what I put together. This is the same deck that I took with me to BCS Toronto. I still have a lot of ideas for what I wanna change in the near future, so I will be sure to show that, but for now, I wanted to show you the baseline for what I started with and um, how it's been going for me for me with it since. Uh, before we jump right into the deck profile, I am going to do a quick shout out to our sponsor, which is 50 Cards. So if you haven't heard of 50 Cards, it's where you can pick up nation bundles. So if you have a specific nation that you're really invested in, you can go to 50 Cards, pick a set that's coming up in the near future, pick that nation, and you'll get a full play set of every card from that nation delivered to your door. So that way it makes updating your decks really easy. You don't have to deal with the secondary market because you have everything you need. And you can also pick up sleeves, deck boxes, whatever accessories you need to up upgrade your deck and update your deck. So 50 Cards is a great place for you to buy all your Vanguard necessities and you can get 5% off when you use code Nexus at checkout. You got competitive pricing, you got a discount. There's nothing to hate about ordering from them and 50 Cards has amazing customer service. So you'll never have a negative experience. And without further ado, we're just gonna jump right into the deck profile. All right, so jumping right into the deck profile, starting off with our starter, which is Coel, who's also featured here on the mat. Coel's your V-series starter, so they all do the same thing, which is drawing a card and gets you a quick shield. Uh, we're doing Coel because it's SP, and it's also the Gurgit starter. Two copies of Sunrise Rain Knight Gurgit. Uh, this is the one from the G era. So it has that defensive skill for GV2, kind of plus one, still plus one, top four. Choose a card, it goes to the Guardian Circle. And then it also has a stride skill for when you G unit strides, you can top four, call something, and the called unit gets 2K. So it helps you fill up your board, which is cool. Uh, but we're running it because of the errata from Campbell to get two extra markers right when you ride into Gurgit, which is really cool. Then we're running two more copies of Sunrise Rain Knight Gurgit. So that way we're running a full play set of the same name. It also has a defensive skill, top five, two to Guardian Circle, or an offensive skill when it attacks, top five, two to Rear Guard Circle. Everything called by a card ability uh, to your rear gets an extra 5k power. This for each marker. This also gets 5k for each marker. So anytime you call with its effect, they get 5k for all those extra markers you got. This makes a really good big old beat stick as well. So the goal here is to make two markers with this Gurgit and then make another marker when you ride this and then kind of go working with three to four markers depending how the game's going. So we're running four Gurgits in total. Then we're running three copies of my boy Percival. So this is just to make you extra markers. So when Percival's place, you can count blast, discard, get an imaginary gift excel, and then search for an Aglavel from deck or drop, which is really cool. You can only use Percival once per turn and you can ride it, get a marker, which is nice. But the goal here is basically to get as many markers as you can for a really big offensive. And then, you know, make that really big Gurgit push with all those extra markers you got when you have all those offensive attacks. Then we got two copies of Mock Slash Dragon, the man himself. Mock Slash is your really big extender, so you get a Mock Slash on your board. It's really threatening. When it attacks, you counter boss one and you call a card from your hand. So that works with, you know, with the Gurgit skill. So since it's called by a card ability, whatever the unit is called gets that extra power from the markers. And the goal is to then chain off into a random amount of superior calls after you swing with the mock slash. So if you got one on the board, you're good. You got two on the board, that's a death sentence to your opponent. And so that is it for the normal unit grade threes. I'm now just gonna go ahead and move on to the grade twos. Starting off with grade twos, I got four copies of the V-Series Canarius promo. This thing is insanely good. It gets an extra five power and shield if you call two or more units during the turn. So it's basically unite without the unite keyword. Then when it's placed on rear or guardian circle, you can look at the top three cards of your deck, choose a grade two or less card, call it, and then you put the rest on the bottom of your deck. If it was called to the guardian circle, the card gets called to the guardian circle instead of the rear guard circle. So it can be a good defensive card, but we're mostly using it as an offensive card so that we can call it, Look at top three, call something, hopefully like a Wonder Ezel to then chain into more cards. But what's really cool is you can call Canarius top three, call another Canarius top three, and just keep on chaining uh, if you get lucky enough to see them back to back, which is really nice. This is just a really good card just because it gets that five shield and it just helps you build a board. It's also not GB restricted, so you can just call this right when you ride grade two. So 
This card is really, really aggressive and I love it. Uh, speaking of aggressive cards, I'm running my full four copies of Aglovale. Just playing around with the deck, I really liked being able to search my deck out for the Aglovales as much as possible for deck thinning purposes. So that was nice. I was running three for a while. I might tone it down to three again, but for uh, Toronto, I was just running the four, which was working pretty well. Uh, it's my ideal ride target, so I do want to ride into this. It's on Vanguard Circle, kind of blast like a top three, call something, the rest go to bottom. And it's rearguard skills, when it attacks, you pick a rearguard, it goes to soul, this gets 10K, and at the end of that battle, this goes back to your hand. So, fuels soul, fuels soul adds cards back to your hand. Uh, it's a search target for Percival, it's just an overall really good card, and it's a ride target. And it's a, you know, it's a Liberator. So that's like the cherry on top right there. Love my Liberators. Then lastly for grade twos, two, co three copies, sorry, of Wonder Rezzle. Uh, this is just a free call because you can call it during the battle phase to call something else from hand. Anything you call with this is called technically by a card ability. So it activates Gurgit's effect for the markers. So this is overly, like really, really good. The reason I'm only running three instead of four is space and also the fact that I don't really want to ride this. I'd rather just kind of search it or call it, but if you can find the space to up to four, I recommend doing that. Running the 12 grade twos is nice. Or if you want to drop Aglavail to three and run one, run a Wonderezel to four, you can do that as well. But I am liking uh, the three. It's working out fine for me. So that is it for the grade two lineup there. So then I'm just going to go ahead and move on to our grade ones. Starting off, we're gonna go into our Gorbaduck. I am running one copy of the V-Series Gorbaduck and then three copies of the G-Era Gorbaduck. The reason for this is the G-Era Gorbaduck is when you place it from hand, you can reveal a grade three, search your deck for a unit with Gurgit in its name and add it to your hand. So this way, if I am missing my specific G Gurgit and I wanna be able to get those two markers, I can at least guarantee the search and just pull out of my deck. And since that's kind of the goal of the deck, and also it doesn't hurt to search this out for the late game when I want to go in the push. So that's kind of the reason why I'm doing it, doing it for that consistency. But I can understand the argument for wanting to go full four of this one, just because it searches for any grade three. So this Gorbaduck, when you place from hand, top five, find a grade three from among those five, add it to hand if you added something, discard one. What I also really like about the G1 is that this does count as a stride fodder. So when you pay the cost of stride, you can discard this. This gets 5K when you call two or more things. So you have, you know, really good defense with a 10 shield, 13K beater or booster. And then this is like your searcher stride fodder. So you can go two and two, you can go the full four, however ratio you want to do it. But this is what I was playing with and it was overall consistent, it, it helped, but I've you can go either way. I don't think it's that detrimental to the deck. Then I'm running three copies of Dindrain, uh, only the three copies because of space. That's really my best argument there. So what Dindrain does when it's placed by a card ability, you can Soul Blast one to counter charge and get 3K or draw a card. So it's mostly there because it activates just by being played by card abilities, whether it's by Wonder Rezzle or from deck. So it's just a really good versatile card and counter charge is really important to the deck. Then I'm running three copies of Hanali because we are in the Hanali meta. Uh, Hanali's new effect after the errata lets it be that so that during the main phase, you can remove this unit from the rear guard circle. And until the end of your opponent's next turn, when your opponent's fifth battle or more attacks your Vanguard, they have to pay a counter blast. So what's really cool is if you have two Hanalis, you can activate both, and then basically for every fifth or more attack, your opponent has to pay two counter blasts per attack. So I was mostly running it to kind of test it out, but the only issue was in all of my games, every deck I played against only attacked about maybe three to five times maximum. So I never played against anything that was like really attack heavy. We're in a very weird control meta right now. So the Hanali didn't see much play, but uh, we're just really in that state right now where everyone's kind of avoiding the Hanali and avoiding these heavy attacks. But I figured I'd test it out. And um, honestly, I don't think it's necessary. If you'd rather one run Josephus or you'd rather run more Dindrains, other units, other grade ones like Malagants or something else you think is gonna be really fun for the deck, I'd say go for it. I don't think Hanali is necessary. Maybe you can throw it in as a one of for attack, but uh, yeah. But it, it mean, it also has the continuous effect where while it's on the rear guard circle, all rear guards that attack the Vanguard during the fifth battle that turn or more, the counter blast has to be paid regardless. So it's kind of scary when it's on your own turn as well. So you have to make sure you call over it or you suck it into soul with Aglovale. So 
Just things to keep in mind with that. Lastly, for my grade one normal unit, we have our Malagant. Um, the one Malagant, just because the same reason we're in a Honolulu meta, which means we need Counterblast to attack. So Malagant is Soul Blast 2, and it's placed on rear, counter charge 2. So if you want, you could actually just drop, you know, two of the Honolulu, grab another Malagant and another Dindrain just for more counter blast. You could work with that as well. The deck has a pretty good Soul Charge engine. So you'd say work with what you got. And if that's what you want to go with, go for it. But this is what I was running when I went to Toronto. So that's it for the uh, normal unit grade ones. We're now just gonna go into our trigger units. Starting with our over trigger, I did decide to go with the blue spiritual king of aquatics, Edos Faro. Uh, this is the reason because if you use the Armatino uh, over trigger, you will deck out from all the rear guards drive checking. Uh, you just go through your deck so fast. So what the initial effect is, you can choose a card from your drop, add it to hand, and this gets, and you can give a rear guard or a unit, sorry, an additional crit. Um, this is really good because if you have Mox Slash on the board and if you have Wonder Ezzel on drop, that's just an example, you can add Wonder Ezzel to your hand so that when you swing this Mox Slash, you have a call target. So, or if you need a specific target in your hand during your offensive turn, maybe you need Percival, maybe you need a heal trigger for G guarding next turn. So it still has some play, has some, you know, good optimal usage. It also gain, gives something a crit, which is really good offensively. This actually is what helped me win one game against Eradicators in Toronto. So shout out to this crit for sure for, for that because crits with, you know, triggers that are crits are just really, really good. Crits win games. That's all I'm trying to say. Uh, speaking of crits, four copies of the Scarface Lion, the Errata, the, because all, we're a Gurgit focused deck. We might as well run Gurgit triggers and it's a defensive draw, which is really cool. But then we got four copies of our Gold Garnish Lion for paying the cost for stride. Uh, and we don't need the Theodora because we have Scarface now. So now we have Scarface with 15 shield and 10K power. And we got our Gold Garnish Lion for paying the cost for stride. So. Full on eight crit there. Then we got our three copies of Halo Shield Mark. Uh, we got the three of the Sentinel because we are running the Sanctitude and we do go through the deck really quickly so the draw triggers can deck you out. But I really like working with the, the three marks. So what's really nice is that this can be called by Slamy Flare or whatever other G guards we have that call from the deck to the Guardian Circle. So that way you can PG and get around certain guard restricts, which is nice. Heal triggers, I am running the one Shaggy Rabbit that got errated and then three copies of Clarity Wing. Uh, Clarity Wing is your heal guardian. So if you haven't ridden to grade three, you can give your Vanguard 10K for the turn, or you can pick one of your opponent's units to get minus two crit till the end of the battle. I like the one Shaggy Rabbit for counter charge exclusively. That's like the main reason why I'm running it. It helps paying the cost for defensive skills with Gurgit. So when you G guard, you combine this and another heal trigger to, you know, soul charger, counter charge, really helpful. Now that is it for the triggers. That's all 16 of them. And then now going into our order cards, I am running the one Forbidal and the one Elementaria. So Forbidal is really helpful because your main two targets for your Forbidal is my boy Percival and my guy Moxlash. So these two are the main targets for your Forbidal to turn because Forbidal lets you call from the deck or the drop zone. So it's just it's just a really good card. And since they're being called by card effects, they also get that power from V-Series Gurgit as well, which is really cool. So Forbidal is a great card for this deck. And uh, it did get some pretty good usage in Toronto. Then we got the one Sanctitude, which is kind of mandatory in a lot of premium decks these days. So it's uh, if your opponent's Vanguard has triple drive, you can play without having to pay the cost. And it's basically a PG. You put it into the order zone, you discard a card from your hand, you pick a grade three Vanguard and it cannot be hit to the end of the battle. It gets around guard restricts um, because it's going to the order zone and not the guardian circle. So a lot of really good versatility there. So these two are kind of, you know, really good staples for this deck and I really like them a lot. Now we're getting into the G zone, uh, starting off with the $70 mandatory card for this format, which is Harmonics Messiah. There's a lot of text on this card, but I'm just gonna summarize it as it gives you a another blitz order or ticket, which is kind of like the quick shield, but it gives you 20K instead. It's called a guardian shield. The next thing it basically does is if you do decide to stride it, um, you can unlock any number of your rear guards. And if you do, 
you have to discard that many cards from your hand. I would say this is helpful against maybe the Messiah matchup. I definitely do not recommend doing this while your opponent is on Chaos Breaker because it will just benefit your opponent because Chaos Breaker draws cards when you unlock your own cards. So, um, but this is mostly just the fact to give you a Guardian ticket. It also has that really cool ability where at the beginning of your turn, if you had two or less damage and you did not take any damage, you can uh, put the top card of your deck into your damage zone face up and draw a card so that way you have a counter blast to work with which is nice so there's no damage denial there. It's a, for a card that's mostly used just for a 20k shield um, it's really interesting how expensive this card is. I'm like debating between whether it's necessary or not because the 20k shield does help a lot so if you're getting into premium, I would say try and figure out a way to get your hands on one of these. You're gonna need it for every deck you play in the premium format since it can be used in every deck. Just work on that. If not, it's fine. You can get away for it, with it for now if you're a more budget player. That's enough about Harmonics Messiah. We're gonna move on to the fun stuff. We got our Ratted Campbells with the full effects because I forget things. So the new effect is you can stride it by an act ability while your Vanguard is currently Sunrise, Rain, Night, Gurgit and you have no markers. You can stride this, flip a copy face up, get two, mark, get two Excel markers, and then the when attack hits ability of Campbell now works even when it does not hit. So that's really cool. You can look at top five, pick something, call it to rear, it gets 2K. The important thing is that it's giving you markers. So we need the two because you have to flip itself for the cost and you can't use it ever again after you get those markers. So we're just working with just the two. Then we got two copies of Brambent Dragon. Brambent is like my go-to stride after I'm on my Campbell turn. So when it attacks, you choose two of your rear guards, you put them on the bottom of your deck, and then you draw two cards, and then you can choose up to two from hand, call them to rear. If you called two, this gets a crit. So it's just really good because this gets around the Gridora stride because you are calling cards from your hand. This is like really, really good. So you can do this twice since I have two copies. It flips up anything. You're gonna flip your harmonics or flip whatever else in your G zone you want. Uh, it's just really funny that Gold Paladin's kind of more love like calling from hand than anything now. But yeah, this is mostly just to get around Gridora and you know get some good hand and push with that crit. Then we got two copies of Glorious Raining. This is basically if I'm in the late game and I have no deck and I need to put cards back into my deck, if I have a good amount of hand, I will at least try to like put some triggers down, maybe put them back into the deck and then top amount, you know, call the cards that aren't triggers and have some triggers left in my deck. Um, that's mostly what it's here for, but what it does is when it attacks, you put two rare guards to the bottom, flip Glorious Rain and face up, look at top seven, and for the total number of cards face up in your G zone, you can call that many cards. They don't get power, um, but if you did call three or more cards, you can kind of charge and soul charge, so repay its cost. So that can be helpful in certain matchups, but the only issue is that the cards don't get power when they're called, but if you want to, you know, make a really good rush, if you can, the card's helpful. I don't think it's mandatory. I think you can run Helios or whatever else you want to run instead, but this is what I decided to go with. Then I'm running two copies of Advarius. Advarius is basically the anti Honolly card because what you can do is you can swing with all your rear guards first, and then you can swing with Advarius. Advarius puts all those rested rear guards to the bottom, and then it restands at the end of the battle, and then you can swing again. So that way you can get multiple attacks with, and get around Hanali, which is nice. So what it does is all your cards placed by card abilities get 5K. Like I said, counter, when it swings, kind of us one. All the rested rear guards go to bottom. If you put four or more, you can restand this unit with drive minus two at the end of that battle. So this is, we're running to, to basically get around Hanali and also because it calls cards from hand for its ability, because you can choose up to two cards from your hand and call them when it attacks, you're getting around the Gridora stride as well because you're still calling cards from hand. So I do like that we got a lot of, you know, good balance against the Gridora stride with this deck. So I, I'm, I'm taking advantage of that with the Advarius. We got the one copy, a Sphere Cross, uh, in case we can't go into Campbell, but we still want to stride on our opponent while they're at grade two. So it has the act ability, G zone. If your Vanguard's grade three, kind of blast two, discard a card, stride it. And then it's act ability is soul blast one, turn anything and your G zone face up, top five, call two, that's it. It just makes a board, doesn't hurt. We have the space for it. So run your one spear cross. And then that's pretty much it for the main G unit. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into the G guardians. We got our two slamy flares. I bumped it down to two. Just testing it out, but you might want to bump it back up to three. Pick a rear guard, put it on the bottom, top five, call two things with different grades to the guardian circle. Really good because a lot of these cards have really good amount of shield defensively. 
So you can pretty much guard most attacks with Slimy Flare, which is nice. We're gonna run two copies of Sanctified. Uh, Sanctified is kind of dangerous, I would say, because um, you are going through three cards from the top of your deck really easily. So just keep that in mind. So when it's placed on guard circle, soul blast one, look at the top two, call them both to the guardian circle. Uh, if you don't call both, you have to discard whatever you don't call. If you called a, a card with that's grade one or more, you can draw a card, which is really nice. So I've actually had games where I've G-guarded with this and the card I drew was another heal trigger to G-guard again, which is really funny. But this is really good when you have no rear guards because you can't sling me a flare without rear guards. Then we got our one Elise. Elise is when place kind of lost one, flip a G-guardian face up, top two, one goes to guard circle, the other goes to bottom. If the guard is successful, you can move the card from guard to rear guard circle, which then helps you pay the cost for Slimy Flare, which is nice. Then we got our one Dismal. I like the Dismal because if you're playing against decks that retire during the battle phase, like Aqua Force, you can use Dismal to protect your key units like Mox slash Dragon. So Dismal makes it so that units, you can pick a unit on your rear guard circle, give it resist, and that unit also cannot be attacked. So basically make sure that that unit is staying on the board and it's a cradle mental. So you can throw this in any deck. If you have a deck you want to throw this in, I recommend it. It's pretty helpful. But we're doing the one because, you know, not every deck has a retire function during the battle phase. So that is it for the G zone and for the deck. So thank you all for watching. I really appreciate you sticking around for these pretty decently long deck profiles. But overall, the main goal of the deck is to go into your Gurgit first, get those Excel markers, go into your V-Series Gurgit for that big push swing uh, using Mox Slash Dragon to extend your attacks, and then also using Wonder Ezel and Canorius to chain into a bunch of other attacks. You, you know, swing with this, this calls this, this calls this, top five calls something else. These are are uh, kind of like the, the ag aggro of the deck, and this is like the, the engine, if you <laughs> want to think of it that way. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it as always, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.